Hi, everybody. My name is Carol Coker Cool. I am a master's degree social worker with Prevent Child Abuse Indiana and Dad Zinc. We are brought to you today by Department of Child Services in Indiana and Kids First Grant. So, so glad that you're here with us. We're going to talk about safe tots and we're going to try and do it louder this time because we've done one before and this is our louder version. So, lots of different topics uh, how we pulled together safe tots we looked at all the ways that children were getting harmed in indiana and dying possibly so we tried to put in a fast program um, for some of our groups so that we could touch on all those topics and just get people thinking about how can we make our environment safer how can we make our kids safer so today we're going to talk about uh, shaken infant syndrome uh, you might hear it um, called preventative uh, head trauma, abusive head trauma, traumatic brain injury. But if you hear all those things on the TV or the news, just remember really probably people are talking about shaken infant syndrome. So it's a, a violent shaking of little people. It could happen up to ages five or six even. So um, that we'll get into here in just a minute. Safe to sleep. So how do we lay down our little ones that are under six months or so? How we lay them down to sleep? Safe haven law. That's a law that's been in Indiana for uh, uh, about 10 or so years. We just need to tap, tap, touch base on that. Knowing our partners and caregivers safety tips. So what do we need to think about if we're going to leave our children with people? Water safety, especially important for the summer times, but really our bathtubs are any time, right? Um, firearm safety, those are other issues that have come to our attention that children in Indiana are especially dying from. So first of all, tell me about little ones. What do you know? What do you, what do you think about when you hear about little ones? Brian? Um, think about that they're very vulnerable. They are vulnerable, okay, to our touches, uh, very sensitive to our uh, loud voices or uh, name calling. All that needs to be taken in consideration when you have a, a little one, okay? So um, what else is uh, particular about little ones? What do they do more than the big kids, Brian? Uh, cry. They're crying noise. Their crying noise can be very um, disruptive to us. So that's what shaken infant syndrome really comes from, is uh, the uh, violent shaking of young children. Uh, it is our inability to cope with the child's crying. So that crying noise can be very uh, agitated uh, to people, to even animals. Uh, and we need to be aware and protective of our children even through that. So the ABCs of crying, all babies, guess Brian? Cry. They do, all babies cry. Sometimes three to five hours would be normal for a little one. So um, we need to know as their caregivers, some ways to take care of them and to be sensitive to their needs. So what are some things that we could do to help a baby stop crying, Brian? Brian's my soul. Rock them. Rock them. Brian's my sole participant today, so I'm going to be picking on him a lot. Um, we got to rock them. How else can we soothe our babies? Uh, talk to them, sing. Talk, sing. There's all kinds of things, really, if we think about it. There's all kinds of ways we can help the baby stop crying. Some other real basic ones, right? Feed them, because I know I get grouchy, right? Yeah. Angry when I'm hungry and so feeding them, changing their diaper, you know, when I'm with the, the seventh and eighth grade classes, that's about the last thing they think of is changing their diaper. Nobody wants to go there, but they need us, right? To take care of that because their bottoms can get very sore uh, if not. So changing the diaper, feeding, very important. Here, I even have a pretend bottle, right? Feed them, change their diapers, um, check to see if they're sick. Maybe they've got a fever, you know, maybe they're running a, a high fever, maybe they're teething, and uh, maybe we could help them with some Origil, um, something like that, uh, that might help them with their gums being so uh, inflamed. So whatever it is, try and remember those tips that help us to get the baby to stop crying, because 
you know, motion almost always. We'd go on a stroller ride. We could take them outside if it was uh, nice and cool. Maybe that would help uh, with their temperature even. So lots of different tips. Just think about or have somebody you can call, you know, uh, and have, have them come up with some ideas if you don't know all the solutions. But if that noise is getting to you and it's getting annoying, what are some tips we can do for ourselves? Take a break, go lay the baby in their safe place and on this tabletop is not the safe place, right? We'll talk about safe spots here to sleep in just a minute, but on their, which side of their body, Brian? On their back. On their backs, especially for little, little ones. <laughs> So we you are somewhere else and maybe you don't have those things. So even pulling out a drawer, emptying the drawer, putting that baby on the floor and setting the baby in there would be safer than putting them on an adult bed, uh, adult couch. Those are not safe. We'll get to those safe places here in just a minute. I know there's a lot of kids being home right now because of COVID and um, we've got to think outside the box sometimes and uh, getting them in safe places in uh, safe environments. So even telling people when you have them babysitting uh, where some safe places would be. Okay, so shaken infant syndrome is the violent shaking of young children and, and infants. It could be up to five, six years old. So even our older kids, we need to let folks know it's inappropriate to ever shake a baby, okay? Uh, inability to cope with a child's crying is definitely a form of abuse. So even older than our little ones, we gotta remember, some of these tips are about little, little ones. Some of these tips are for older kids. So we just we need to remember, uh, and if, if I had you in class in person, you could ask me, but um, all right. If we had to show a good way to hold a baby, would this be the best way, Brian? No, you're not supporting the head. Okay, people know, you see it on TV or whatever. Uh, uh, maybe at church, you see Mary holding the baby Jesus. And this, this is the way, this is a good way to hold a really um, young person uh, because you're supporting their whole body with your whole body. You're supporting their head and neck with your arm. So where this way the baby's head is could go any different direction, but this way is much safer. And so we encourage folks to hold the baby this way. When they get older, they add more strength. Absolutely, you know, you can hold them this way. Uh, dad's got their football holds, you know, like this. Um, my father-in-law used to hold them like this, and that is holding the head and the, and the body. But this just feels so much more secure when you're up against somebody, like a good warm hug. So this is a really good, good hold. We want to encourage that with the shaking. If people are ever uh, so annoyed by the crying noise, they need to go set the baby down in one of their safe places uh, and holding the baby like that, picking them up like that would be the other hold that we would recommend. Okay, I brought another demonstration, Brian. You're in for it, okay. <laughs> okay, what is this little egg in the container? What is it supposed to symbolize for us? Uh, the brain. A baby's brain, and it's pretty good symbolized, uh, symbolizing that because unlike our brains, our brains are up against our skull walls. So when we rough house, we play football or soccer, it doesn't go very far. But if a little one's brain is so much smaller inside there. It has so much more distance to travel. So they say that when a baby's brain hits, maybe from a shaking, that their hit might be 50 times harder than what our brains would ever take. Did I say 15, Brian? 
You said 50. 50 times harder. Just imagine how much harder an impact that would be just because their brain is so much smaller inside that skull area than ours. Ours is up against its own uh, grown and, and uh, has very little room to move, but theirs has a lot of room to move. So we've got to remember that. <clears throat> That's one of the most important parts of shaking. So, what do you think we're going to do today to this thing, Brian? Oh, Lord. Shake. I know. It's just an egg, right? Yeah. Anybody could do this. Anybody could do this at home. Get a container. Put an egg in. Kind of jot down some notes maybe that you're hearing today. And you can tell others maybe at Thanksgiving or Christmas while you've got a big family gathering how dangerous and show them how dangerous it is to ever shake. So, if I had a normal classroom, I would ask three different people to shake. But today, I'm just going to ask Brian and myself to give a few shakes. Give us a few angry shakes, Brian. Okay, was Brian very angry? I can't see him underneath his mask, but I bet you he's smiling. No, but he did a good job of shaking, right? He did a good job of shaking, and that's maybe what the egg would do, would show us how, uh, how the, maybe the brain would break up hitting against the side of the skull wall. So if we ask two other people and they give us angry shakes, yeah, the egg is going to just dissipate, right? We're not going to see any of the whites. It's all going to blend together. Okay, I'm not promising you this exactly what a brain, uh, what happens with a brain, but you get the idea, right? And then the third person, if they shake, yeah, okay, we've definitely got scrambled eggs, right? Okay, we've got to remember <clears throat> about each time, how many times do you think we shook, Brian? Oh, well, it's back and forth, so mm -hmm. four, five, six, maybe ten. Okay, so all together, you think about ten? Maybe. Yeah, three or four times each. So, yeah, we got to remember that when there is, a, you know, like when you're in a car accident and you, your head goes back and forth, that's called whiplash, right? The same thing happens to that little brain inside there. So when there are uh, ten to fifteen shakes, we double that. So that means there were, you know, 20 to 30 shakes where wow. like hits going on in the brain. And what we know about some children, they're shaking maybe 40 to 50 times. How many hits to the brain then are we talking about, Brian? That's 100. 80 to 100 hits at 50 times harder, we said, than our brains would ever hit. So you put all those numbers together, it's a very bad situation, right? Yeah. What could happen to these kids? What kind of uh, problems might they have? Do you know, Brian? Well, brain damage, yep. spinal damage. Okay, so we're talking brain uh, injury, mm -hmm. uh, which might lead to developmental disabilities. Blindness. You know? Blindness, uh, mental retardation, um, maybe needing, uh, a breathing machine for them to help breathe because they've hurt their spine. Lots of different things could go on. Deafness, you know, when you talk about your brain getting hurt, uh, can docs go back and easily fix those things? No. No. We have a hard time, you know, we're still learning about brains so much and we are still a long way off, I, I believe, in figuring out how to fix brains. So very best is not to hurt it in the first place, right? Yeah. So that's one of the big message is we tell all of our babysitters, we tell all of our folks that are watching our kids, never shake because of all these dangerous things that might happen from a shaking. Good job. Very good. Okay, name me some difficult times and or positive times with the baby. Any ideas, Brian? Uh, difficult times would be when they're um, teething, teething, uh, potty training, potty training. Okay, absolutely. Feeding, you know, they're throwing food off as fast as you're putting it on their tray. Uh, a lot of difficult times can be stressful for parents. Sometimes we need to just go take a break. So tell me, what are some things we could do to go take a break? What do you like to do, Brian? Uh, just go watch some TV. Yeah, this is a good time. Watch TV for a short amount of time. You know, we can't totally walk away from our kids and blank out, you know, but um, in games or television, this would be a good distraction for you to calm down, right? If you ever needed someone 
to help, we hopefully have a list of four or five names of folks on our phone or whatever that would come and help and give us a break. Maybe you take a bubble bath. Maybe you go for a walk. Uh, whatever it is that you like to do, television, my boys would say gaming, absolutely. So whatever it takes for you to calm back down because we all need breaks, especially when we're watching kids. So remember those tips to keep people's phone numbers that would help uh, and that may be close by too, that would be great. Okay, we got some tips for tears. So those tips were the things we wanna make sure to help the baby stop crying. That might be feeding them, burping them, changing their diapers, change, uh, check, make sure they're not sick. Uh, gently rock the baby, talk softly, try a passy. Passies are good, guys. Uh, the docs say if uh, that helps a baby self-soothe, that means calm down, and that's a good thing. So pacifiers, you know, it's, I know they've had a bad rap for a long time. Most of kids give it up before it ever affects their teeth. So pacifiers are good. Thumbs sucking, good, the docs say. It's always uh, there with them. So those are things that people uh, need to pass along because for generations it's been thought of as a, as a negative, but they do know that most kids give it up before they ever become you know, ready for school or whatever. Let's see what else, tips for tears. Take the baby in a safe place and take a time out. Yep, don't leave the baby with anybody you don't trust. We're gonna talk about that in just a minute and tell people who care for children, never shake. Okay, get and leave emergency numbers. All right. Now the safe sleep questions, that's what we're coming to next. We've kind of touched on those. Uh, let's talk about my baby in the crib. We see, uh, maybe you can or cannot, but there is a blanket in my crib. There's a stuffed animal in my crib. There is a bottle, because the body, babies need bottles. They have a pillow under their head. They have bumper guards because when I was a new mom, you had to go get the next fancy thing, you know, bumper guard. Brian, what is supposed to be in with a new baby the first five months? What's oh, supposed to be Oh, wow. In? Uh, nothing. He knows he is. I know he knows, <laughs> right? Nothing. So here's where I get to have some fun. No bottle. <laughs> Whoops. No stuffed animal. No blankie. No bumper guards, no pillows, nothing in the crib, guys, with the baby. One class of mine came up, maybe a pacifier, you know, a pacifier might be okay, but nothing for uh, most of what we're talking about, nothing in the crib. So the baby is all by themselves. If it's cold, you just got to put them in, you know, comfy pajamas, um, wrap their socks, you know, and maybe twos. Um, whatever the case may be. Nothing in the crib, guys, just the baby on their backs to sleep. These are all very important uh, tools to remember, telling your folks if they're watching the kids, nothing in the crib or the uh, playpen, playpen, we used to call it that, pack and play. Is it okay to lay the baby on the couch, Brian? Oh, no. Okay, not the couch, not the chairs, uh, it could be okay on the floor, but who else is down there on the floor? Animals. Yep. Could be dirt, animals, right? <laughs> we got a lot. But I understand we're taking a lot of places away from people, but uh, it could sleep on the floor. That would be all right. But you do have to be remember that dogs uh, can get very agitated too with a crying noise. So even though they're a good dog for us, this person might be new to them. And so they um, maybe um, would become annoyed too by the crying. So we've got to remember some things like that. Put the baby back in the crib. Okay, how about co-sleeping with our baby? Having them in our bed? Because that's really where they want to be, right? No way. Okay, no, it's just not good. It's not a healthy thing for your relationships in general, but it's not uh, healthy for them either. They can certainly have their crib in your room and you could co-sleep that way but not with us in our bed, it's just too dangerous. Our beds are made out of all kinds of foam and air and water and you know all kinds of things that weren't made for a baby. 
So especially the first six months on their backs in their, in their bed, crib, bassinet, playpen. Okay, we're gonna go on and talk about uh, our caregivers and who else is watching our children. So uh, is your babysitter, daycare center, licensed or certified? Uh, what is the adult to child ratio, meaning how many adults are there per children? All these things you need to know kind of to make sure it's a safe place. Uh, what is their property like? Are there hidden locations? Are there water hazards? Even folks, a bucket, you know, still filled from somebody washing their truck car. That's a danger for a little one that might toddle into it head first. Um, are they very clear about their safe to sleep practices? Sometimes I've even heard of parents saying, could you take a picture of my baby now? Uh, and seeing where the baby is sleeping so they make sure it's in a safe place. So they make it sound really nonchalant. Would you just take a picture so I can see where my baby is uh, or see them sleeping right now? Um, call or visit, maybe stop in unexpectedly. Uh, just to know where your child is and who's watching them, how many people are there watching. Do not leave your child with your partner or anyone who has violent tendencies. Now that sounds like a no-brainer, but yeah, uh, people, not all people are meant to watch children. So having uh, a list of good folks um, in mind. If your child seems afraid around that person, uh, if that partner has too high expectations, they expect them to whatever, clean up their room when they're only two or three, that probably has too high expectations. They get angry and then they lash out. Um, so uh, all these things, something to think about when you're leaving your kids alone with, with other people. Tell other folks about shaken infant syndrome. Tell them about safe sleep. Tell them about water safety and gun safety. You know, I think about with the caregivers and the partners, we can also talk to them about our older kids, right? When my older kids would go to stay overnight at somebody's house, I'd want to talk to the parents and say, hey, do you have guns? Are they locked? Do you put them up? Do they lock them, put them away? Um, are they easy, you know, for the kids to get to, into? Uh, hey, do you have a swimming pool or do the neighbors? Can you make sure that the kids, you know, are being watched if they're going to be in the swimming pool? So all those different things, um, that even with older kids, uh, we should be talking to the parents and the caregivers. Now, my next slide, if you were in my class, has all kinds of different water safety issues. It has a bucket, it has some swimming pools, it has a toilet with the lid open, and it has a bathtub. Many of these things I would say are dangerous, especially if people have their cell phone out. You know, if they're gaming, they're into it. You know, if they're talking to their girlfriend, they're into it. They aren't necessarily an arm's length away if you're in the swimming pool with a non-swimmer. They aren't necessarily paying attention when the kids are in the tub. But even we know kids that have drowned in toilets with the toilet seat open, we've known kids drowning in a bucket outside. So any standing water, we've just got to be careful. I know all the new neighborhoods, like Brian's, right, like mine, have uh, retention. retention ponds and very dangerous for kids. You know, we're all attracted to water, so we all want to go and see it and be around it. So it's just dangerous for little ones because they want to get in it. Okay, we're winding down here, guys. We only got like another topic or two. The last, next to last one is the safe haven law. And I'm just going to read it to you. Enables a responsible person to hand over a ch an infant uh, anonymously without fear of arrest or prosecution. The baby must be less than 30 days old. Okay, it can be given to a firefighter, physician, nurse, paramedic, law enforcement, medical technician. So those are the people, they also have the baby boxes. I know at the fire stations, some fire stations have them. Um, but it would be great for me anyway, for you to give it to a person because that person is going to maybe ask, hey, is something going on in your life where it's, you know, you could get some help. So this is a really important time to talk about um, the safe haven hotline 
or our 211 line, which is the helpline for everybody. So maybe that couple needs uh, some support, needs some back, back, um, backup. But the safe haven law, I'll read it to you since we don't have that uh, on the screen, 877-796-4673. Or in Indiana, anybody can call 211 to get all kinds of support. You know, shelter, food, clothing, all kinds of different mental health help. If you just want somebody to talk to, because you got the blues, whatever the case may be, 211 is an awesome resource. Okay, so I said the baby has to be 30 days or so, right? Less than 30 days could be given to those people. Uh, if you give it to a person, a person might ask for, when was the baby born? What's the medical history? Maybe there are, you know, uh, other circumstances that the caregivers need to know about. Maybe this baby has drugs in its system. Maybe it's HIV positive, perhaps. Who knows? You know, but if the caregivers do know, they could give uh, the new caregivers that information and they'd be so much better off. So that's the goal is to get the babies taken care of. Uh, even we're not, if we're not able to write them off. All right, good job. Um, let's see, so everybody realize safe haven law. You do not, uh, you don't have any fear of arrest or prosecution. So it's a really good thing for people to know about, but we can't spread the word fast enough. That's why we're here doing these classes. So you all can spread the word to 20 other people. Okay, our last topic is the firearm safety. And again, we have to explain to little kids, you know, they may be playing with guns on their internet and their TV shows uh, and video games, but we've got to tell them how that's different than real life and uh, how, you know, it's very dangerous. We need to keep our guns separated from our bullets. They need to be locked, both of them, and separated. When, like I said, even when your older kids go to people's houses, you need to ask, hey, do you have a gun out uh, where the kids could find it? Um, because we have so many firearm deaths. Even if your kids are older and they've been safely trained in using those things, maybe for hunting or whatever, uh, they still need to be locked most of the time and very observed if they're out because kids have emotional you know, uh, problems just like we all do. And those are very real and they may think the gun's the only thing in the house that's uh, there to rectify their situation, even though that's not true. Okay, kids don't always know, so. All right, are there other resources or um, things we can give out? Brian, you got any other suggestions? Our, our Prevent Child Abuse, uh, is www.pcain, prevent child abuse indiana.org. And then we talked about the 211 line, the safe haven hotline, um, the 1 800 children, 1 800 children. You can just spell that out as you're typing it into your phone. That's another excellent resource. Uh, and knowing your partner, who's, who's going to be around your children. Yep. Daycare, understanding. Um, once again, pop in on, on the daycare worker. It doesn't mean that you don't trust them, but you just right. love your baby more. Okay, so Brian's saying check in with your daycares, pop in just for a surprise visit. It's not that you don't trust them, but you just wanna check uh, and make sure your baby's good and safe. Check with your caregivers, make sure they're well informed because it's all of our responsibilities to take care of the kids. They can't do it themselves. Thanks for joining us today, guys. We'll see you.